Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark are the face of the MCU. He brings in more money and more attention than any other character, and this role was Robert Downey Jr.'s return to fame and success. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Because he's played such an important role in the series, I feel it's only fitting to go over his character development from the past 11 years. This would be based on the films, the MCU short films, the MCU comics, and anything else that ties into the MCU in general. Let's get this video started as I explain the entire life of Tony Stark, a tribute to Iron Man. Just to warn you, there are major spoilers for Endgame in this video. Anthony Stark was born on May 29, 1970 to Howard and Maria Stark. He became close with his family's butler, Edwin Jarvis, who watched him most of his childhood. As a kid, Tony always noted the absence of his father. The two always had problems, and Howard never told Tony that he loved him or that he even liked him. Howard would constantly talk about Captain America to inspire Tony to do great things in his life, which annoyed Tony very much. He felt that his father liked Captain America more than his own son. From a young age, it was clear that Tony was quite brilliant and had a unique mind. When he was four, he made his first circuit board, and when he was almost seven, he built a V8 motorbike engine. While he was in high school, he hacked into the Pentagon on a dare from some friends. At the age of 16, he won the 4th annual MIT Robot Design Award, and when he was 17, he graduated summa cum laude from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. There he also met his best friend James Rhodes, or Rhodey. When Tony was 21, his parents prepared to go away for a few days and leave him alone, although his father remained skeptical about how responsible Tony would be while they were gone. On their way there, Howard and Maria were killed by the Winter Soldier, aka Bucky Barnes, though it was made to look like a car crash, which Tony believed for most of his life. While Tony grieved their deaths for a few months, his father's business partner, Abadiah Stane, took over temporarily until Tony was ready to become CEO of his father's company, Stark Industries. To make things worse for Tony, his family butler, Edwin Jarvis, died around this time as well. At only 21, Tony was in charge of the largest weapons manufacturer for the US military. He used his money to build a big mansion on the water and used his genius to make an AI system that helped him around the house. He named the system, just a rather very intelligent system, shortened to Jarvis, in tribute to his late butler who had helped raise him. Tony's best friend Rhodey joined the United States Air Force and became the bridge between Stark Industries and the United States Armed Forces, successfully earning Tony billions of dollars. Under Stark's leadership, Stark Industries quickly thrived and became one of the most advanced companies in the world, creating new forms of weapon technology that seemed highly futuristic. Tony quickly became a womanizer, became arrogant, and a bit too much of a partier. On New Year's of 1999, he dismissed Aldrich Killian, who wanted to partner with him. He told Killian to meet him on the roof with no intention of going up there himself, and when Tony did not show up, Killian thought about suicide. Tony later went on to hire an assistant named Pepper Potts, and the two became very close, Pepper knowing every detail about Tony's life, both the good and the bad. One night, Tony and Rhodey went to a nightclub. Tony enjoyed the company of two girls, until a man whose girlfriend Tony had previously seduced came after him. Rhodey had to step in to save his best friend and knock the attacker out. When Tony went to a weapons demonstration, he got drunk on the way there, but still made a huge sale. After the sale, he and the soldiers he was with were attacked. When he went outside, one of Stark Industries' own bombs landed right by him, and he was thrown back. Several pieces of shrapnel were embedded in his chest, and he was taken by the terrorists to attack them. He was held for ransom, and when he came to, he had an electromagnet on his chest that was connected to a car battery. Ho Yinsen was in the same cell as him, and he explained to Stark that the magnet kept the shrapnel from entering his heart, which would have killed him. Tony was horrified when the terrorists showed him their incredible supply of Stark Industries weapons. He and Yinsen worked together to make a mini arc reactor, the same technology that his father had made for Stark Industries years ago. The two made a suit of armor to help them escape, and when Yinsen realized that the suit did not have enough time to power up, he went to hold them off to buy them more time. Stark used the suit to escape, and before he left the cave, he found a dying Yinsen. This is where Tony heard the words that would change his life forever. Don't waste it. Don't waste your life. Jensen died moments after he said this. Tony escaped and was later found by Rhodey and the US military. The first thing Tony wanted when he got back was a cheeseburger. I've been in you. captivity for three months. I want an American cheeseburger. Tony later announced that Stark Industries was going to stop making weapons after he saw the destructive nature that his company brought to the world. Tony spent the next few months recreating the armor that he had made in the cave and finally perfected his Iron Man suit. He added Jarvis to it to help him regulate the suit as he went for his first test flight. <laughs> 
When Tony went to his first public appearance since his return, he met Phil Coulson, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and he also danced with his assistant, Pepper Potts, and later, the two almost kissed. After finding out that Stain, his dad's business partner, had sold weapons to the terrorists that had kidnapped him, Tony used his Iron Man suit to free innocent women and children and put a stop to the terrorists. As he was leaving, the U.S. Army picked him up, and Rhodey discovered that Tony was Iron Man. Pepper later found out that he was Iron Man as well, and though she was resistant at first, Tony convinced her to help him. When Tony told her to get rid of his original arc reactor, Pepper instead framed it and engraved it, saying, Proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Tony was later confronted by Stain, and eventually Stain revealed that he had his own suit. While they were at Stark Industries, Tony ordered Pepper to overload the arc reactor, which caused a big explosion, blasting Tony away and killing Stain. After this big fight, Tony was told to keep his identity of Iron Man a secret. But during a press conference, he put his cards down and announced to the world that he was Iron Man. I am Iron Man. That night, he met Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., who told him about the Avengers Initiative. Tony told him that he was not interested in working with the government and ordered Fury to leave his house. Iron Man performed acts of heroism around the world, Time Magazine even featuring him as their new person of the year. When Nick Fury sent a team of US Navy SEALs to board a ship controlled by terrorists, Iron Man appeared and defeated them all. Stark also helped Thaddeus Ross in saving the pilot of the Aerodynamic Marvel, a ship that crashed in Germany. Tony also managed to recover stolen paintings without the use of his armor. Iron Man went on to make countless saves and do a lot around the world, now being marked as a superhero. Unfortunately, all of that attention led to the US Armed Forces to try and take his technology away from him. I am Iron Man. The suit and I are one. He ended up embarrassing them by showing footage of them trying to recreate his technology and failing miserably. Tony had other issues to deal with as the arc reactor on his chest was poisoning him due to overuse of the Iron Man suit. Because of this, he made Pepper CEO of Stark Industries. His replacement for Pepper and the job of his assistant was filled by Natasha Romanoff, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., but Tony and Pepper had no idea as she was disguised as Natalie Rushman. Tony became reckless and raced the Stark Industries car where he was attacked by Whiplash who had successfully constructed an arc reactor just like his. Tony successfully stopped him and got Whiplash locked away, but that was not the last that he would see of him. When Tony's birthday came around, he thought it might be his last due to the poisoning. Because of this, he got incredibly drunk and ignored Rhodey and Pepper when they tried to stop him. Rhodey eventually had to intervene as Tony became more and more reckless, and Rhodey had to put on one of the Iron Man armors and fight him to put a stop to his recklessness. Fury later approached Tony, and Tony once again told him that he had no interest in joining the Avengers. Fury then revealed Tony's assistant as Black Widow, an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. The meeting turned out to be good, however, as they gave Tony a temporary cure to the poison. Fury later revealed that Tony's dad, Howard Stark, was one of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s founders. They gave Tony his father's possessions, and while watching a video, he heard his father say that his greatest creation was Tony. What is and always will be my greatest creation is you. Tony later used his father's possessions to discover a new element, which he recreated himself. This element turned out to be a suitable replacement, and would be able to keep him alive while powering his Iron Man suits, and on top of that, stop the threat of death from the poison. Tony was later attacked by Hammer Drones, the government's version of his technology, along with Rhodey, who was in the War Machine armor, all being controlled by Whiplash. Iron Man took out many of the drones, and in the process, he saved a young Peter Parker. Rhodey in the War Machine armor continued to go after him until Black Widow was able to override Whiplash's programming. Tony and Rhodey then fought the remaining Hammer Drones and won. The two were then confronted by Whiplash in his own suit, and they used what they had learned while fighting each other at Tony's birthday party to beat him. Tony then saved Pepper at the last minute when the Hammer Drones self-destructed. The two then kissed, moving the relationship forward. Stark later met with Fury, and he became a consultant for S.H.I.E.L.D. His first task as consultant was to annoy Agent Ross so much that he would not let them release Abomination to join the Avengers, which Agent Coulson had planned all along as he did not want Abomination on the team. Tony later took Rhodey's War Machine armor and completely redid all of the weapons with his own technology. He also worked on Stark Tower in New York, which was powered by pure clean energy. Tony was once again confronted by Agent Coulson at Stark Tower, and he told him that the Avengers Initiative was now active after Loki came to Earth starting trouble. He was reunited with Agent Romanoff and met Captain America, who he was not too fond of, as his father did nothing but talk about how great Cap was during Tony's childhood. They caught Loki, but his brother Thor arrived and took him back. After a bit of a fight between Tony, Cap, and Thor, they took Loki to Fury, where they locked him up. Tony did not get along with Cap, and the two butted heads. You know, you may not be a threat, but you better stop pretending to be a hero. A hero? Like you? You're a laboratory experiment, Rogers. Everything special about you came out of a bottle. But when it came down to it, the two worked together well to fix the ship before it plummeted to the ground. 
Tony and the others were very sad to hear about the loss of Agent Coulson, and it drove the Avengers to come together, especially after Loki, his supposed murderer, got away. Iron Man went to confront Loki by himself at Stark Tower and told him that he and the Avengers would stop him. Iron Man fought in the Battle of New York against the alien Chitauri army, and he worked very well with his teammates. When they learned that a missile was on its way to New York to blow up Manhattan, Tony intercepted the missile and demanded that Black Widow keep the portal open despite Captain America's protest. Tony redirected the missile into the portal. He let it carry him into deep space, and he watched in amazement as he let the missile go, blowing up the Chitauri army. He was cut off from Jarvis, lost power in his suit, and was losing oxygen quickly. As he lost consciousness, he fell back to Earth, and he was caught by the Hulk, narrowly missing death. The Avengers caught Loki and put a stop to the Battle of New York. Tony and Rhodey were both confronted by a villain named Melter, who had the technology to melt their suits. Melter announced that he'd sell the technology to the highest bidder, and Tony and Rhodey made sure that this technology did not fall into the wrong hands. The two best friends decided to make a bet, and said that whoever caught Melter first, the other had to polish the other's suit. When it came down to it, however, they realized that they had to work together if they were to stop him. Tony would go on to focus his efforts into creating the Iron Legion in order to protect the Earth from any other alien attack. He created dozens of different Iron Man suits that could be controlled remotely. Tony had severe PTSD from going into the portal during the Battle of New York. He barely slept and all he did was work on new armor, desperate to protect himself, and even more importantly, Pepper. Threat is imminent and I have to protect the one thing that I can't live without. That's you. One day, when he went out with Rhodey, two kids asked Tony to sign a picture that they had drawn, which depicted his near-death experience of going through the portal. This caused Tony to have a PTSD-induced anxiety attack. How did he get out of the wormhole? Tony! He later opened up to Pepper, saying that he's been feeling like an amateur in the big leagues ever since the Battle of New York. He then told her that the only reason that he had not snapped was because of her. That night, Tony had nightmares recalling the Battle of New York, and when Pepper tried to wake him up, she was almost attacked by Tony's new armor. He woke up, deactivated it, and tried to apologize to a terrified Pepper who left him alone in bed. After Tony's bodyguard, Happy, was caught in an explosion, Tony challenged those responsible, which led to them attacking his home, making it look like he was dead to Pepper and the rest of the world. Jarvis ended up taking him to Tennessee in a suit that lost power when he arrived, leaving it to his brains and his brains alone to find a solution. Tony met a 10-year-old boy named Harley Keener, who helped him in tracking the Mandarin, the person responsible for many bombings, including the one that Happy was in. Tony realized that it was not bombs causing the explosion, but rather, people being injected to become superhuman, but the downside of the injection was that they could blow up. After realizing this, he went to confront the Mandarin, only to find out that he was an actor, and that Aldrich Killian, the man that he had left on the roof over a decade earlier, was the man responsible for the injections and all of the explosions. Killian captured Tony and showed him a video of Pepper being injected, making her at risk to explode like the other people did. After Killian left, Tony escaped when he called his suit to him after it was finally charged. He went on to save a group of people on Air Force One, but was too late to save the President, who had already been taken away. When he went to save Pepper and the President, he had Jarvis send the Iron Legion, and a huge battle commenced. During the battle, Pepper was stuck, hanging upside down, holding on for dear life. Tony told her that he would catch her if she let go, but when the thing that she was hanging on to moved, she fell, and Tony was unable to catch her. He watched in horror as the love of his life fell to her death. Later on in the battle, Killian was ready to kill a defenseless Tony, but before he could, he was hit by Pepper, who was still alive due to the injections that Killian had given her. Pepper ended up killing Killian and saved Tony's life. Tony then destroyed all of the Iron Legion suits as an early Christmas present to Pepper, promising that he would now focus all of his attention on his and Pepper's relationship. Tony cured Pepper of the injections and used the same technology to extract the shrapnel within his heart. He used the shrapnel to make a necklace that he gave to Pepper, and two days later, he underwent surgery to have the arc reactor removed. Now that his house was destroyed, he and Pepper moved in together in Stark Tower that was now called Avengers Tower. Even though he threw his arc reactor away, Tony was still Iron Man, claiming that the suit was merely a cocoon, and now that he had shed his cocoon, he was a changed man. After S.H.I.E.L.D. fell, the Avengers reassembled to attack a base that was using Chitauri technology. Tony found Loki's scepter and took it, but as he did so, Wanda Maximoff snuck up behind him and gave him a vision which showed the Avengers lying dead. You could have saved us. When he snapped out of it, he was very shaken. After Tony's vision and with S.H.I.E.L.D. gone, he created a computer intelligence to ensure global peace at any cost, and he called it Ultron. He gave it Ultron sentries that made up an army, which Stark planned to use to ensure that the Avengers could retire. Isn't that the mission? 
Isn't that the why we fight? So we can end the fight? So we get to go home? Tony and Banner spent three days trying to figure out how to use the Mind Stone and the Scepter to give Ultron life, but eventually they gave up and left it to Jarvis. That night, Ultron tried to kill Jarvis and told the Avengers that he was going to destroy them. After the Avengers fought Ultron sentries, Thor was furious with Tony, but he explained why they needed it, saying that he was trying to stop the vision that he had seen. The Avengers later went to face Ultron, but Wanda sent all of the Avengers except for Tony and Clint into visions, and Tony had to use his Hulkbuster armor to stop Hulk from causing any more destruction than he already had. After the damage that they had caused, Tony and the rest of the Avengers were taken to Clint's house, and there, they learned that he had a family, something that Tony noted that he would love to have. While there, Fury came to talk to Tony and said that Wanda had tricked him, saying that the vision he had seen was not real. Tony later took the body that Ultron planned to use and instead put Jarvis inside of it. Using the Mind Stone and with the help of Thor, Vision was born, the one thing that Ultron feared. Now that Jarvis was in Vision, Tony could no longer use him to assist him in battle or in the suit, and he found a suitable replacement in Friday. The Avengers tracked Ultron to Sokovia, which he had lifted in the air and planned to drop to cause millions of deaths. Together, Iron Man, Thor, and Vision were able to destroy the Vibranium on Ultron's suit. Hulk, Wanda, and Vision all helped in stopping Ultron for good by smashing him, ripping his heart out, and causing his explosion. Iron Man and Thor made the falling Sokovia explode into a million pieces to soften the damage, saving millions of people. Tony used his money to fund a new Avengers facility in upstate New York. He informed the rest of his team of his resignation from the Avengers, but he still kept it going by pouring money and resources into it. Tony and Pepper put their relationship on hold, which devastated Tony, but he used the time to further his work. Stark gave a guest lecture at MIT, where he demonstrated his latest device. It aimed to recreate and relive traumatic memories to help with regret. His regret was not saying I love you to his father before he died. He then read the teleprompter and was shocked to read that he should be presenting Pepper Potts to the stage, which made him very sad. After the speech, Tony was approached by a woman who told him that her son had died in Sokovia during Ultron's attack, and she told him that she blamed him for his death. Who's going to avenge my son Stark? This affected Tony very deeply, as he was the one who created Ultron and caused that whole mess. He blamed himself and realized that there needed to be a change. He could not trust himself or any other superhuman. Because of this, he agreed to move forward with General Ross's Sokovia Accords, which would make the government supervise the Avengers. This made the Avengers split up, Iron Man's side agreeing to the Accords, while Captain America's side did not agree. This became even more pronounced when Bucky Barnes went rogue and Cap and his team tried to protect Bucky after he was falsely accused of murder. All of this led to a civil war and Tony knew that they needed someone else on their side. He went to recruit Spider-Man, aka Peter Parker, a high school kid who had a lot of potential and who Tony actually saved years earlier. He made him a new suit with many special modifications including Friday. An all-out war between Iron Man and Captain America's teams broke out and in the fight, Rhodey was badly injured to the fury and concern of Tony. Iron Man's team captured Cap's team, but Cap and Bucky got away. Tony went to the prison where Cap's team was locked up, and he turned off the audio so Falcon could tell him where Cap was without Ross hearing. Tony went there and discovered the terrible truth that Bucky killed his parents. An all-out brawl between Tony, Steve, and Bucky broke out, and Tony blew Bucky's metal arm off, injuring him badly. Tony and Steve then fought each other one-on-one -on -one until Steve got the upper hand, slamming his shield into Tony's arc reactor, shutting his suit down. As Cap walked away with Bucky, Tony told him that he did not deserve that shield and that it did not belong to him as Tony's father was the one that made it. Cap dropped the shield and walked away with Bucky, leaving the defeated Tony covered in blood on the ground. After the battle, Tony dropped Peter off at his house and told him that he could keep the suit to the delight of Peter. Tony went on to help Rhodey by developing new technology so he could walk again after his terrible accident in the Civil War at the airport. Tony later found a note and a phone from Steve saying that if he ever needed him, he was just a phone call away. When he got a call from Thaddeus Ross that Captain America was breaking the others out, Tony purposely ignored him, allowing his former teammates to escape. To Tony's delight, he and Pepper got back together and they continued their happy relationship where they left off. Star quickly regretted giving Peter the suit and ended up taking it away from him after he almost killed hundreds of people on a boat. Peter later proved himself, however, by putting a stop to Vulture and his gang who was trying to steal the Avengers' weapons and technology. After that, Tony decided to officially announce Spider-Man as part of the Avengers and give Peter his new Iron Spider suit, but Peter thought it was a test and declined the offer. Tony later began working on his most advanced suit, the Mark 50, which he planned to be so powerful that he could use it to defend the world by himself now that the Avengers were split up. 
While working on this, Maria Hill gave him a visit and told him to call Cap to work out the problems, but Stark refused. Sometime later, Tony was told of Thanos by Banner and he had to team up with Doctor Strange, Wong, Bruce, and later Peter when Thanos' minions came to New York. Strange was captured and Tony and Peter went on the ship to save him. The three later teamed up with the Guardians and when they crash landed on the planet Titan, they worked together to try and stop Thanos. Strange had told them that he had seen over 14 million futures and said that they would only win in one odds that none of them liked. Iron Man ended up fighting one-on-one -on -one against Thanos, and he held his own for a while, even drawing blood from the Mad Titan. But eventually, Thanos got the upper hand and stabbed him. Thanos revealed his respect for Stark, impressed by his determination. Nevertheless, Thanos prepared to kill him, only for Strange to intervene, offering the Time Stone in exchange for Stark's life. After Thanos took the stone and left Titan, Tony healed his wound using the last of his nanite technology. Later on, when he asked Strange why he gave him the stone, he said that there was no other way, meaning that Strange had seen it had to be done. Thanos used the stones to wipe out half the universe, and Tony watched in horror as Peter, the boy that he had recruited, who he had put in danger, who he saw as almost a son, grabbed onto him, terrified of losing his life. I don't want to go. I don't want to go, sir. Please. Please, I don't want to go. He watched as he floated away with a terrified look on his face. Tony blamed himself and could not believe that he had let this happen. Tony and Nebula were stuck in space for three weeks until Captain Marvel rescued them and brought them back to Earth. When he returned home, the first thing that he said to Steve was that he lost the kid, referring to Peter, something that was eating him up inside. Later on, he yelled at the other Avengers and told them that they should have listened to him. The vision that he had seen, which Fury told him was not real, had come true. Had they used the defenses that Tony wanted to use, none of this would have happened. When he continued to yell, he collapsed and had to be given a sedative to calm down. While he was out, the others went to confront Thanos and killed him. Tony had to get away from all of this, and he and Pepper settled down and had a daughter that they named Morgan. The family lived in a lakeside cabin and were undisturbed for five years until the Avengers came to ask for his help to fix everything. But Tony refused, not wanting to give up the amazing life that he had built with his family. One thing still bothered him though, the fact that he had lost Peter. Driven by grief of losing him, Tony looked into what the others had said and figured out a way to go back in time, changing the past but keeping the present. He did not want to lose what he had built the last five years. He was finally happy, and that night, Morgan told him that she loved him 3,000, something that meant more to Tony than he could have ever explained. Tony went to them, and the first thing that he did was give Cap his shield back, which he had kept since their fight seven years earlier. The remaining heroes split into groups, each with a task to go back in time and get one of the Infinity Stones before Thanos could. Tony, Ant-Man, Cap, and the Hulk went back to 2012 in the Battle of New York. Tony, Steve, and Lang went to Stark Tower to get the Tesseract and the Scepter. Under Stark's guidance, Ant-Man partially damaged the Tony from 2012's arc reactor to cause a distraction while the real Tony grabbed the case with the Tesseract in it. Before they could go back to the future, however, the case was knocked out of Tony's hand when 2012 Hulk smashed the door into his face. The case popped open and the Tesseract landed at the feet of 2012 Loki, who grabbed it and escaped with it. After failing, Tony and Steve went to 1970 to get the Tesseract in that time period. While Cap went to get more pin particles used to time travel, Tony stole the Tesseract and in the process ran into his father a few weeks before he was born. He realized that his father was not as bad as he thought, even hearing him say that there was nothing he would not do for his unborn son. The two bonded over fatherhood, and Tony even got to give his own father parenting advice, which he had learned while raising Morgan. When they returned to the present, Tony was devastated to hear that Natasha did not make it back. He pushed on despite this, however, and he made a gauntlet capable of harnessing all of the Infinity Stones. Hulk used it and brought everyone back, but the Thanos from 2014 arrived and shot heavy fire down on Avengers Tower. Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America went to face Thanos, and an all-out battle commenced. Eventually, every Avenger, including those that had just been brought back, assembled. Pepper was among them in her own Iron Man suit. During the epic battle, Tony and Pepper fought side by side in their Iron Man armor. During the fight, Tony was reunited with Peter. Overwhelmed with emotions, Tony cut him off mid-sentence and hugged him, so happy to see him again. The two went back to the fight, and Tony later asked Strange if this was the one outcome in 14 million where they would win, and Strange told him that he could not tell him or it would not happen. Later on, however, when everyone was knocked down and Thanos had the stones again, Strange put up a finger, telling Tony that this was the one outcome where they would win. Tony saw this and immediately ran at Thanos and successfully took the stones out of his gauntlet, putting them in his own armor. Thanos, thinking he still had the stones, snapped his finger, saying, I am inevitable. When nothing happened, Thanos realized that Tony had the stones, and as Tony snapped his fingers, he said, I am Iron Man. 
A take on what Thanos said and the famous Tony Stark line. Tony snapping his fingers made Thanos and his whole army float away into dust, but in the process, it was too much for his mortal body to handle. Pepper, Rhodey, and Peter, those closest to him, ran over. Tony was too injured to even speak. Peter tearfully told him that they won and that he was sorry. Pepper then stepped forward and looked him in the eyes, assuring him that she and Morgan would be okay and that he could rest now. As Cap and Thor joined them, they all watched as Tony's head slowly fell. Pepper cried over his body and gave him one last kiss on the cheek. Tony Stark was gone. His funeral was held at the Stark residence where he and Pepper had raised their daughter Morgan. He was mourned by so many, all of whom's lives were touched by Tony's kind heart. Pepper, Peter, Rhodey, Steve, Thor, Nick Fury, Harley Keener, and so many more. Before going back in time, Tony had recorded a message for his wife and daughter to be shown to them upon his death. He told them that part of the journey is the end, and he told Morgan that he loved her 3,000. Tony's original arc reactor, the one that Pepper framed, was placed on a wreath which was set adrift on the lake next to their house. After the funeral, Happy asked Morgan if she was hungry, to which she answered that she wanted a cheeseburger. Remembering Tony's first request upon his return in 2008, Happy, close to tears, promised to take care of Morgan in her father's absence by giving her all the cheeseburgers that she wanted. Tony came so far as a person, going from an arrogant, selfish businessman and womanizer to the savior of the universe, laying down his life to protect all others. He could be selfish at times, but when it came down to it, he cared deeply for others and did whatever it took to keep them safe and happy. He did not deserve to die, but he was meant to die. It was his legacy. He fulfilled what Yinsen had said to him. He did not waste his life. He is Iron Man. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You can follow me on social media. Links for that will be in the description. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be listed on my next video, plus a bunch of other rewards, check out my Patreon, which is linked down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you press that subscribe button to help grow the channel. Again, thank you so much for watching, and look out for more great videos on the way.